Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Buck Rowell. All right, second day back to work this week. Uh, we are at the halfway mark and uh, uh, things continue to go well. Um, today was a little bit slower of a day. It's funny, I was on the same machine as I was yesterday, but uh, we were the machine was just not behaving today. It was just not uh, processing parts. Things kept getting jammed up and... Uh, and uh, we kept uh, having problems up and down the line. So actually ended up sitting around doing a lot of nothing today. Uh, yesterday, today was really the anti-yesterday. Because yesterday the machine just ran and ran and ran like a top. And probably we processed more parts yesterday than any other time I've been there. And today the machine was down basically all day until about four in the afternoon. And then they finally got it going, and even then it was a little bit unreliable and uh, up and down. And like I said, we just had had problems with alignment of uh, of all of the guides and stuff in there, and product just kept kept getting tangled up all day. So, uh, like I said, didn't get a whole lot done today. You know, probably one twentieth of the production we got from yesterday. So. I don't know. I guess that's just how it works sometimes in this industry. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. Um, but I got a lot of chance today to sit down and uh, read SOPs. So I got really ahead of the game on that. Um, when you first start out with this company, you know, they have, I don't know, I didn't even count, but somewhere between 150 and 200 SOPs that you have to read. And they're all kind of given due dates about when you have to do them. And... Most of them, you know, they want they want done like well, a bunch of them they want done like in the in the first thirty days or so, and then they get a whole bunch of, that they want you to do like within the first three or four months. Well, today I finally got through all of the ones that are due in April, and actually now I am up to July. I, everything I have to do now is due in July or later. So. That's good. That was a productive day from that standpoint. Also, because the machine was down for so much uh, time, they gave me a little bit of chance to play with some of the features on the machine. There's a lot of like manual things that you can do on the machine to correct errors. Like for instance, when something goes wrong, you know, whenever you whenever you have a man manufacturing machine like this. They have to put a bunch of safety interlocks in there to basically keep people from hurting themselves. And sometimes those safety interlocks can get really confused and really tangled up when things go wrong. So I spent a little time today uh, dealing with three of the most common problems that can happen. And basically just took some good notes, well, you know, watched my trainer, took some good notes, and then just spent a whole bunch of time practicing these pro these processes uh you know one of the things that the machine is is driven by pneumatics and i don't know if you a lot of you know what pneumatics is but basically pneumatics just means that you're using air pressure to make uh make robot arms move and stuff like that and uh like i said in order to keep people safe when the machine is operating the doors all have interlocks on them so if you open up the door uh, any door on the machine, the machine shuts down immediately. And uh, basically what ends up happening is it, inter it interrupts the, the airflow to the pneumatics. And that just basically grinds everything to a stop. Now, when you have a machine that's picking up something here and putting it over here and using pneumatics to go back and forth like this over and over again, you want it to be in a home position, either here or here when it stops. But since it's, since the... Uh, the interlocks are all based on when the door opens. You know, it could be in the middle of a movement when the uh, robot stops. And so you have to get in and reset everything, rehome everything so that when the machine starts up, it doesn't get all confused. Because if you're in the middle of a cycle and then try and start the machine up, then the machine gets all confused and it gets all tangled up and it really causes a lot of problem. And so a lot of, you know, what was dealing, what I did today, like I said, was dealing with getting the machine to move back into its home position when something went wrong. And like I said, I just practiced that over and over and over again. Um, like I said, I did do a lot of, uh, standard operating procedure reading, but there's only so much of that I can do in a day before my brain kind of turns to mush. And, 
you know, I, I also wasn't really much of a fan of just sitting around doing a lot of nothing while the machine wasn't working. So, you know, I got out and walked a little bit and that, that was good. You know, one of the things uh, in the manufacturing area, they kind of keep the temperature a little bit on the low side, which is great when you're working because you're, you're working up a little bit of a sweat and, and all that. But when you're sitting around doing nothing, it gets cold in there after a while. And at one point they told me I could go away for a break and I got over to the break room and it's like, oh man, it's cold over here too. I'm already a little bit, little bit on the cold side. And then I get over to the break room, it's even colder. And the last thing I feel like doing at that point is drinking a cold drink. So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to use this break and I'm just going to kind of walk around because the two things I was battling with sitting around doing nothing was being cold and being a little bit sleepy. Because I guess sometimes when you're, when you're in cold temperature, it kind of makes you shut down a little bit. And I figured, okay, well, the worst thing I can do when I'm cold and sleepy is go into a cold room and drink a cold drink. And I decided the best thing to do was just get out and walk because that's going to get the blood circulating, which is going to wake me up. And uh, it's also going to kind of warm me up a little bit. And so that was a good thing to do. And I got, got a, bit, a bit of walking done today. Um, I also talked to one of the people who uh, I was working with, was actually my trainer. And she was telling me that in addition to all the other benefits, uh, the company will buy me one of these Fitbit bracelet, uh, bracelet things that you see sometimes, and they'll give it to me for free. In fact, I placed the order for mine today, and the company is really serious about keeping us healthy. And so what they do is if you plug, if you plug this Fitbit into your phone and track all of your... Uh, your walking and your sleep patterns and your eating patterns and stuff like that and uh, you know just let the company monitor that they'll give you a little extra money on that and it's like what $75 a quarter plus you know bonuses if you do kind of stuff like that so I figured you know what the heck it's free money let's do it and it wouldn't hurt to to keep myself healthy anyway so got that done today too and that was uh, kind of productive so hoping to go back tomorrow and hoping everything will be uh, you know, running more normal, but, uh, you know, that was kind of what happened today. Um, sorry, some of these workday vlogs are going to be a little bit on the short side because, you know, when you work 12 hour days and then you come home and you're going to bed after an hour, it doesn't leave a lot of time for vlogging. So I hope you understand that. Um, I'm back off of work again on Monday or on Sunday, and then it's a four day weekend. So hopefully we can go out and do something, assuming the weather cooperates right now. They're talking about rain on Saturday and Sunday so we'll just have to see what happens but anyway that's really all I have to talk about for today so thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night. <laughs>